April 24th, 2022. Where did the time go? Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. What can we say? Anyway, um, well, happy Easter. <coughs> It's the Easter season. We celebrate for 50 days. So, um, 205. Hymn 205. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory, please. 277, S277.
be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. <coughs> Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. of the apostles. When the captain and the temple police had brought the apostles out of the temple, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you're determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Our psalm is portions of Psalm 118. <coughs> this is a, one of the better psalms of the 150. It is a psalm of victory. We'll do it by half verse. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory. In the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live. And declare the words of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely. But he did not hand you over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you. For you have answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. The Lord sends now success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless, we bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. God has shined upon us. Walk our procession of branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. His mercy is yours forever. A reading from the Revelation to John. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, 
priest serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, the Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples met were locked for fear. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and put my finger in the mark of the nails, my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Christ. <clears throat> In the name of God, Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <coughs> well, this is uh, the Sunday we look at... Uh, Thomas, who we some call the doubting Thomas, uh, but he's not actually doubting. He's uh, he's believing his senses, um, so he's actually a realist rather than a doubter. But um, he doesn't have faith, so he doesn't doubt. Um, he doesn't have faith because he's got to touch it in order to make sure it is. Now. When we think about this, uh, there are a couple things to think about. First of all, we are used to the name Thomas, but Thomas just means twin. So that means that Thomas was the second born of the twins. The first born got everything. The second born gets nothing, not even a name. 
So naturally, his way of dealing with that is to say, unless I see it and touch it, it's not real. Well, of course, that's nonsense, but it is the way he was because he was uh, a day late and a dollar short for his entire life. So he, uh, he naturally wanted to make sure that he knew and touched. Now, I was thinking about this in terms of, uh, you know, I don't, nobody ever had to prove to me the boiling point of water. I think it was, what, two, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, depending on atmospheric pressure. But, um, but I remember in physics class, we put the little thermometer in and boiled water, and sure enough, it, it was around 212 degrees. I didn't need that information, but Thomas might have. Not that he cared or knew anything about Fahrenheit or any of the other things, but he was that person, that person. John is very hard on literalists. He, uh, we've already seen him earlier in his uh, gospel when he deals with uh, Nicodemus, and Nicodemus says, do I have to go back into the womb and be born again? And uh, he said, you are a teacher of Israel and you're a literalist? How can that be? He doesn't say it that way exactly, but what he's saying and what he says throughout his gospel is that literalism doesn't work. It's not how the gospel is supposed to be understood. And Thomas is the quintessential literalist. Things are black and white and unless I deal with it, it isn't real until I say it's real. In uh, seminary, I remember um, we had theology according to uh, uh, umpires, baseball umpires. Um, and uh, the, the umpire that Thomas was is the umpire that says, it's nothing until I call it. And uh, of course, there are different umpires. I, I saw this absolutely amazing uh, slide into second base. Um, and as the, the player was sliding, the second baseman, he had his left hand, the second baseman was holding his glove down to touch him. The guy simply moved his, his foot around and touched the base before he touched him. Perfect. It's a pretty fast reaction, really. The, um, it's just an amazing piece of baseball. It has nothing to do with anything else. <laughs> um, I just had never seen that, where he just kind of took his foot and moved it around. The guy, and, he, and he stood up and, and managed to stay con in contact with the base. Um, I'm glad I didn't see the rest of the game. I just was interested in that little piece uh, that just shows up on my phone every once in a while, something like that. Um, anyway, <sighs> Jesus is warning us and saying, you know, that everybody who comes after is going to have to believe by faith, not by, um, not by touching. Um, and our own senses, we can't believe everything that we see. Now, we happen to live in a, a very strange age where um, it seems like conspiracy theories are everywhere. And of course, one has to say sort of the opposite to people who believe in conspiracy theories is that occasionally you might need to touch something to make sure it's correct, whatever that may be. Um, some of the wild conspiracy theories that people believe um, 
have <laughs> zero sense of credibility. Um, we have to believe things that we cannot experience in our own senses. We just have to do that. We are a mass society. There are a whole lot of us on this planet, seven billion human beings. Of course, there are many more insects, but they don't communicate quite the same way we do. But seven billion people have to have to tell stories and trust each other to a certain extent. And of course, if somebody's telling lies, that is going to sort of mess it up. We, uh, we do not have a democracy in the United States. We have a republic. And a republic means that we have representatives the people who run the school board, who, who run state government, who run um, the federal government, um, they're all, in a sense, representative. They're, and when, that means they represent us. We cannot all know and be there in the meetings with them. Um, we can't know everything. But there are some things that we have to trust. There are some things that we have to um, have faith in. I must say that uh, in this recent time, the number of things that is has gotten quite a bit smaller um, just because there is so much baloney out there now. Um, and there's so much uh, prevarication. As a matter of fact, uh, we are now in a, a time of uh, where lying is simply what we do as politicians, if we're a politician. Um, and I don't know how we're supposed to believe that and what we're supposed to do about that. It certainly kicks um, representative government in a very difficult place. I think Jesus is right. You either have to believe it on faith or not. And of course, we now have a few more prominent people who make it very clear they don't believe whatever that is. Uh, but I, I must say, I see the, the battle between belief and unbelief as being worked out even on social media on TikTok and Instagram, which are the two that I follow. Um, there are many others, and uh, I just can't even be bothered with Twitter. I'm, I, I, I don't know what to do with that. Um, but um, we have to decide who we can believe. And unlike Thomas, we don't get to put our hands in where the nails are and in the side. Now, a few people have the experience of theophany. They actually experience Jesus as Paul did and as a number of people. It's rare, but it happens. Those people obviously have something solid to base their faith on. But the rest of us, the rest of us believe or we don't believe. Um, for me, I decided that belief was much stronger for me when I, when I realized what a sinner I was. When I went through some sins of my own and realized uh, the mess that I could easily make of my life. And I had to turn and say, now what do I do with this? This bolus of mess that I had made. And it brought me to my knees and to my faith in an adult 
determined way. Uh, now, when I was a younger priest, I would have told you what the sins were, but you don't get them this time. <laughs> those are those are long gone, much forgiven, and uh, but I'm just telling you that my faith came out of that experience um, for me. Those experiences, because I was there was more than one. Um, well, Thomas, the literalist. If I don't see it, it's not real. I did discover something interesting about seeing and hearing. Um, I, I row. That's my exercise. I get my heart rate well over 100 beats uh, per minute um, as part of my aerobic exercise. And um, for the longest time, I would watch television, you know. I just had it right there, and I was rowing away. But I found that visually, if I was watching something, even a movie I'd seen before, that I would speed up when something really exciting was <laughs> happening, and I would slow down when it wasn't so interesting. And I discovered that all I needed to do was get rid of that visual st stimulation, and I point to the back because my the my stereo is behind me. And so I'm pulling with this. And actually what happens is my, my rate is much steadier, it's uh, much faster overall than anything, but it's because I'm listening. Listening doesn't have as, I think, potent an emotional value as seeing for me. I know I'm a visual person, you just have to look inside my refrigerator to see that. I've got everything in the front so I can see what, you know. And then in, if I ever discover anything in the back, it's usually pretty moldy, you know, we say, because I haven't seen it. <coughs> but Jesus kind of warns us against that literalism. That faith is not really about knowing. You know, we can we can know things, and uh, we can know them through our own senses. Uh, but of course, we've gone way beyond our senses in this age. Um, when I was in college, I learned how to use a a gas chromatograph. <coughs> Would be injecting a substance, whatever it was, uh, into the, uh, the machine and uh, getting a readout of what was in that substance. <coughs> well, you know, that's not exactly, uh, that's not exactly me feeling what that substance is. That's not actually me knowing what that substance is. That's me trusting that the gas chromatograph is going to give me the information I need. Now, over and over and over again, it always does. So I believed it. But that's not really what Jesus is talking about. It's not talking about that kind of belief. He's talking about faith in something that probably is never going to be provable in any real sense. And so when he says, you know, to Thomas, touch my hands, touch my side, um, he's giving Thomas what Thomas needs, but then he's reminding us that none of us are going to get that. We are going to have to live by faith, period. And that means we need to figure out what we're doing and do it. Now, in the Episcopal Church over the last, well, I've been a priest almost 40 years, um, which is just unbelievable for me. 
But um, some important things happened in that time. The ordination of women, for instance. I was a layperson when that whole thing uh, began to, to tune up in the late 60s and early 70s and finally was accepted in, uh, in the late 70s. But we have to understand that it's an experiment. We have to have the faith. And what is our faith in? Our faith is in the fact that women carry the Holy Spirit as much as men do. That's what our faith is in. Now, is there any way to prove that? No. Not scientifically, anyway. Not using the scientific method. But there are a lot of good things that have happened because of the ordination of women. The Episcopal Church went through the Me Too stuff about 35 years ago. Um, now, I will not say that we have arrived. Um, and if you talk to any uh, woman clergy person, you will find <laughs> out that um, they still see the good old boy's hierarchy is still functioning to a certain extent. Um, and I'm sure that's true. Um, but they started the ball rolling long before our culture did. And they did it because we took the, the step of ordaining women. Now, we were not the first ordained women. They, um, back in the 1850s, um, and of course I can't think of the denomination at this point, but it was, uh, um, it'll come to me probably tomorrow uh, when I think, oh yeah, right. Um, but we weren't the first, but we we have gone after it whole hog to the point where we now have a woman bishop. Um, and <laughs> as near as I can tell, she's great. Anyway, so by faith, never provable. We don't get to touch the uh, side and the, the hands. But that's not really belief anyway. That's not by faith, that's by touch. That's by sensory verification. Of course, then what happens after you have that experience? Thomas had that experience. And then Jesus went on and ascended. And then Thomas lived his life after that. And every once in a while, he had to remind himself that he'd had that experience. You have to believe in your own sensory memory. Um, and as we have seen, that is, people forget. People don't remember. They don't grab on to an experience and say, ah, this experience will carry me through my entire life. Think of that. Have you had any particular experience that has carried you through your entire life? Probably a couple, maybe but not very many. Life just rolls along and evolves and things change and we change along with it. And so faith is what we have. And we used to have representative government, but we don't have it so much anymore. Um, unfortunately, our representatives um, have turned into, what would you call them? Uh, reality clowns, I think is who they are. Uh, uh, and then, you know, I, I saw that uh, what's her knuckle from Georgia was in court this week and she couldn't remember a thing she said. Now they put out, <laughs> they gave her uh, copies of her 
tweets and all of those kinds of things. Still couldn't remember, isn't that amazing? Um, well, uh, apparently it's not going to stop her from running. Um, well, faith is what Jesus calls us to, and faith is by what we live. So, Okay, any comments? Anybody got a particular um, experience that has grounded you for your entire life? No? None of them. Yeah. Just, when you're talking about Thomas and things, it reminds me of an old thing I learned a long time ago, a little catchphrase about epistemology ah. that says you really can't know anything until you know everything. So. Right. That's right. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, terribly, uh, well put, well put. <laughs> it's a terrible thing, actually, but um, that's true because what you know might turn out not to be anything, right? right. I know Boyle's Law, but mm -hmm. does that help me in, a, in many other ways? Mm -hmm. Now, I have to be honest here, I can't remember what Boyle's Law is. I think it's about equal pressure throughout a gas, but or a liquid or whatever. But um, but I know who Boyle is historically. I know where he fits into the scientific evolution. Unfortunately, that doesn't help me with his law. But anyway, that's good. I like that epistemology. Epistemology is the the field in philosophy about knowing. And it basically says we don't know anything <laughs> much. <laughs> but by faith, we know. Like Thomas. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, let's stand and say our creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, to him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uh, Form 6 on page 392 for the prayers of the people. In, priest, in peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our, our families, friends, and neighbors. And, and for those, those who are alone. alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, justice freedom, and peace. peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the, for the victims, victims of hunger, fear, fear injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and those in need. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. 
for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Diane, our bishop, for us, our celebrant, and all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God and the church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. So especially for Patricia, Sherry, Janet, Judy, Carol, Tom, Linda, Maggie, Bob, Corky, Tim, Heidi, Donna. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy and grace. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially for the rain refreshing our ground and our crops. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and, and praise, praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust, trust in you. you? We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, us most merciful Father. In your, your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so hold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor of your glory and your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> A reminder that Shelley. Uh, peace, Shelley. <laughs> um, in terms of announcements, uh, Father Chaz Marks will be with us next Sunday um, to meet with the vestry after the service and uh, uh, to talk about the search, which please, soon. <laughs> <laughs> We've been dragging it out now for years. Okay, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Uh, 328-328-328-328-328.
prayer A on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give the thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us, and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we've fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, the perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. <coughs> and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. 
Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ, is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ had taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive all those who trespass against us. And lead us on into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.
blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And thanks be to all of you. Have a good week. Yeah, you will. Have a great week.